Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another 10 video ads video. My youngest daughter has been messing around with this thing. As was the case with the last 10 video ads video that I did, uh, this video will be comprised of nine VHS tapes, each of which I picked up at the local flea market for a dollar a piece. And then I will be ending the video with a VCD that I ordered from Yes Asia in Hong Kong. Before I get started though, um, I was listening to some CDs in my collection. And this one kind of uh, I found interesting after I took the CD out of the uh, case. I don't know why I haven't noticed this before. But anyway, the CD is from Spin Doctors. It is their album, Turn It Upside Down. Now some of you out there, X-File 2708, Look Morse 1, MN12 Bird, Buffer for Kid, Gamer Jitsu, know where I live. And Watcher 3223. Anyway, might get a kick out of this. And no, I don't live in a bar. Now, speaking of uh, X-File 2708, Marcus is a big Anthrax fan. This was the CD I played just prior to that one. This is technically not an album, but it is rather a um, EP that was only released in Europe and Japan and filled out with some previously unreleased songs and some b-sides. As they uh, mention it in the um, liner notes. The longest EP ever. Anyway. I have other Anthrax CDs and other Spin Doctors CDs. First up, as if those of you who collect animated Disney films on video know, they have a long-standing uh, procedure of releasing films on video, having them available for only a short period of time, and then pulling them. And then about seven years later, they will re-release them, generally with a new cover, new reference number, and usually a new transfer. I was at the flea market and I saw this uh, tape of a film that we've already got on VHS twice and on DVD. But the cover made me do a double take because I had never seen that cover before. And in fact, I had never seen Disney use a cover or anything like that, at least uh, here. This is the most recent uh, release of this film that we have on VHS, that is, Dumbo. Catalog reference number 21623. Now, even though the label looks like it's printed directly on the cassette shell, it's not. It's actually a black sticker affixed to the black cassette. Kind of sneaky. The other release that we had is an older release, obviously. Dumbo. Catalog reference number zero two four and the label is actually printed directly on the cassette shell no sticker now the one I found at the flea market totally different cover but catalog reference number 024.
Now at first I thought this might have been a pirated copy. I'm no expert at pirated copies. I have an only, I've only run across a couple in my life, uh, usually on DVD. But this doesn't have any of the earmarks of the pirated uh, videos that I've run across. They generally are missing the publisher information. This has publisher information. But they have always, in my experience anyway, been missing copyright information. This has copyright information. And, as I stated, both of these have the same catalog reference number, 024. And, the same UPC number, although the earlier release has an ISBN, or what I take to be the earlier release. Anyway, one has an ISBN, the other one doesn't. Now, the label on this one is a sticker, kind of grungy looking, and it doesn't look like a VHS label, it looks like a Betamax label. Now I spot check the tape and it doesn't look like a copy. So if anybody out there has any knowledge of this release, this cover, leave a comment down there. Okay, I showed uh, in my last video a release from this series from Warner Brothers. Philadelphia Story. This is special edition, part of their Century 2000 collection. Their Century 2000 collection came in these nice cases, and as was the case with the last one that I showed, this one has uh, quite a few extras. Um, before the movie has the original theatrical trailer, and an all-new introduction by Robert Osborne. Now, Robert Osborne is one of the hosts on Turner Classic Movies, and as it so happens, this film is owned by Turner Entertainment. And then after the movie, there is a documentary called Catherine Hepburn, All About Me, in which the award-winning actress candidly and movingly reviews her life and career. Total running time on the feature, 112 minutes. Total running time of the extras, 65 minutes. Now it could well be, although I'm not certain, but most probably the documentary on Catherine Hepburn originally aired on Turner Classic Movies. That would be my guess. Wasn't too surprised to find this, although it's helpful because it lists inside, among other things, all of the titles that make up the Century 2000 series. I keep wanting to say Video 2000. That was the uh, Bally Midway Williams uh, line of pinball machines, the last line that they made. So I keep wanting to say that, Video 2000, but Century 2000. I was rather surprised to find this, reproduction of a lobby card. I'm kind of curious as to whether this was common with Century 2000 releases and whether each release had just one card or whether it had multiple cards and you could collect a set. I don't know. But I'm going to look for more uh, tapes in this series for sure. Okay, next up. All revved up. And with a title like that, I doubt seriously that it's a romantic comedy. Could be mistaken, but I don't think so. And for some reason, I think this is a rental copy.
Okay, I thought I had gotten all of the volumes of this series out of the way. But turns out I had another one. Now, I'm not showing all of the ones that I picked up this past weekend. I am, in fact, pulling from all of the backlog that I have. Last weekend, or this past weekend, I picked up 15 VHS tapes, and the weekend prior to that I had picked up 40, and I believe it, I picked up 30 the time before that. So I've got quite a backlog of VHS tapes to show, and about 20 Laserdiscs to show. I have uh, ordered more Laserdiscs. I have ordered more VCDs. I have ordered a uh, game for the Sega Master System coming from Australia once more. And I'm making a, or I have made a deal with one of my subscribers for a very rare Sega Master System game. More on that when it comes. We've agreed upon a price. I just have to pay him and he needs to ship it to me after that. Anyway, this is Bubblegum Crisis Tokyo 2040 from ADV Films. Volume 12, English dubbed, two episodes on the tape. And so far all of the cassettes that I've picked up that were published by ADV, they've all come in a white shell, except one was in a yellow shell, but I think it was just white that was uh, going bad, turning yellow. Might have been that it was uh, kept in a smoker's home. That's a uh, big baddie as far as uh, collections go. Okay, this one is sealed. Whenever I come across a sealed tape, I try and pick it up. Unless I've already got like two or three uh, sealed copies of it, there's no point. And then once I pick up a sealed copy, I try to pick up an unsealed copy, and then I'll watch that, and I'll keep the sealed one sealed. The only time I break this rule and go ahead and open up the seal on one is if I'm really desperate to watch it. This is Lethal Weapon 4. And the thing about this series is that all four of the films were directed by Richard Donner. I've already got Lethal Weapons 1, 2, and 3 on Laserdisc. Sealed. Not bad. For a dollar. Okay, this film... First of all, it's been remade. Second of all, it came out the same year as another film that uh, has a similar premise, and it too has been remade. This is the original version of Rollerball, starring James Caan. Now, overall, this is in really good condition. It still had shrink wrap on it, but it was not sealed. Obviously, it had been a rental copy. No stickers, however, on the cassette, except for the one you just saw on the spine. This film came out in 1975. Now see if this premise, this basic premise, doesn't sound like another film released in 1975. The year is 2018. Omnipotent corporations have created a utopian society free of war, poverty, starvation, and disease in exchange for compliance by its people. To entertain the uh, people's thirst for violence, the corporations have come up with a solution. Rollerball. 2018. They've got six years to totally get rid of war, poverty, starvation, and disease. Somehow, I don't think it's happening. Another film that came out in 1975 with that same basic premise was Death Race 2000. Obviously, they don't take place in the same year. That took place in the year 2000. This takes place in the year 2018. But the basic premise is the same. Uh, in order to quench the thirst of the uh, society in exchange for uh, having a totalitarian government, 
uh, the government stages uh, extremely violent events. In this case, Rollerball. In the, death, in the case of Death Race 2000, um, it was a cross-country race, and um, you got points for running over pedestrians. And I don't know if uh, some of you gamers may not be old enough to remember this, but there was an arcade game that came out at the time based on Death Race 2000. Now, obviously given the technology of the time, it was just a bunch of stick figures. But that game created such a controversy and, and such a stink that arcades yanked it. But uh, I don't recall if I actually played it before it was yanked. Okay, I've shown other tapes in this series, anime series, called The Slayer's Try. Now, so far, all of the tapes that I've run across have run 75 minutes, and the title has either ended in an exclamation point or a question mark. This one, obviously, ends with an exclamation point. Showdown. Okay. The Slayers try. Not try again. Try again. I have more tapes in this series yet to show. As well as other series. In fact, I have a backlog of about 50 or more, probably closer to 60 VHS tapes. This next one is sealed. It is from Seduction Cinema. And you might think by looking at the cover that it's called simply Witch Babe. That it is, in fact, Witch Babe, The Erotic Witch Project 3. Okay, now on to the VCD. As was the case with the one I showed last week, this one is a co-production. The one I showed last week was a U.S.-British co-production that had been licensed to Delta Mac, a... Uh, Asian publisher by Fox. This one is a co-production and it was published by Modern Audio International. Now this film was released in 2008 and it has several titles that it goes by. It is an Australian, Chinese, German, US co-production and it's based on a true story. Escape from Huang Shai, also known as the Children of the Silk Road, also known as the Children of Huang Shai. The dialogue is mostly in English, with some Japanese and Mandarin thrown in, and it has Chinese subtitles which aren't obtrusive as the film is in widescreen and for the most part the subtitles uh, fall over the black portion of the screen. Now this film includes in the cast a favorite of mine, Michelle Yeoh, who's a Hong Kong actress. Um, anything with Michelle Yeoh in it, I'm pretty much down for that. I neglected to mention last week that the one that I showed last week had Michelle Yeoh in the cast. Uh, also, the same applies uh, for Moon Lee. It's another Hong Kong actress. I've never heard Moon Lee uh, actually uh, speak in English. 
But Michelle Yeoh was uh, at least partially ed educated in England. Her English is impeccable. You have Rada Mitchell playing an Australian uh, nurse. Chow Yun-Fat playing a communist leader in China. You have um, Jonathan Rise Myers uh, playing a British um, guy by the name of uh, Hogue. And Michelle Yeoh playing a Chinese businesswoman. Based on real people and true events in China, it tells us how a young Englishman, George Hogue, came to witness the brutal killing of men, women, and children during the rape of Nanking. Almost beheaded Jack Chen, played by Chow Yun-Fat, a communist guerrilla, came to the res his rescue and hid George in Hongshai, a missionary home for war orphans. Here, a nurse, uh, Lee Pearson, played by Ra uh, Rada Mitchell, and Madame Wang, played by Michelle Yeoh, a local and powerful businesswoman, become his strength and aid in his time of difficulty. However, with the war catching up, Jack and Madame Wang must help George, Lee, and the 60 orphaned boys to escape from Hung Shai. This obviously takes place during uh, the 1930s, a point in which uh, time in which Imperial Japan was invading Asian countries all over the place, including China. And that's uh, the period in which this film takes place. Most of the film is in English. However, occasionally he'll speak to Japanese soldiers in Japanese. She occasionally speaks Chinese. She mostly speaks English, but she's mostly talking to him. Now, I always watch VCDs on a CRT, not on a high-def screen. So if you watch, try and watch a VCD on a, on a high-def screen, your results may vary. But uh, this is, once again, another VCD release that looks absolutely stunning. And watching it, I forgot I was watching a VCD and kind of fell into the, into the idea that I was watching a DVD until uh, disc one ended abruptly and I had to get up and change discs. But there's a reason, aside from my being unique, in uh, collecting VCDs. The same film that I got from Yes Asia is available on DVD. And if I remember correctly, it was 40 to $50 on DVD. It's also available on Blu-ray for somewhere around $60. VCD was $6.99. Now, it's getting harder and harder to find VCDs on Yes Asia. Um, However, I do have some releases that were made as late as um, late 2011. So I guess they are still making some uh, releases on VCD or making them available on VCD. In any, in any event, this looks and sounds excellent. The film is excellent. It has a large scope to it. It's obviously had a large budget. Um, the side of the... Uh, Japanese planes coming down and strafing people and so forth. Very well done. The the sequences involving the orphans is very moving and um, I highly recommend this film. Escape from Hung Shai or the children of the Silk Road or the children of Hung Shai depending on where you find it. Until next time, stay awesome. For a um, EP that was only released in Europe and Japan and filled out with some previously unreleased songs and some B-sides. As they uh, mention it in the um, 
finer notes. The longest EP ever. Anyway, I have other Anthrax CDs and other Spin Doctors CDs. First up, as if those of you who collect animated Disney films on video know, they have a long-standing uh, procedure of releasing films on video, having them available for only a short period of time, and then pulling them. And then about Now some of you out there, X-File 2708, Luke Morse 1, MN12 Bird, Buffer Kid, Gamer Jitsu, know where I live. And Watcher 3223. Anyway, might get a kick out of this. And no, I don't live in a bar. Now, speaking of uh, X-File 2708, Marcus is a big Anthrax fan. This was the CD I played just part of that one. This is technically not an album, but it is rather seven years later they will re-release them. Generally, with a new cover, new reference number, and usually a new transfer. I was at the flea market and I saw this uh, tape of a film that we've already got on VHS twice and on DVD. But the cover made me do a double take because I had never seen that cover before. And in fact, I had never seen Disney use a cover or anything like that, at least uh, here. This is the most recent uh, release of this film that we have on VHS, that is, Dumbo. Catalog reference number 21623. Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another 10 video ads video. My youngest daughter has been messing around with this thing. As was the case with the last 10 video ads video that I did, uh, this video will be comprised of 9 VHS tapes, each of which I picked up at the local flea market for a dollar a piece. And then I will be ending the video with a VCD that I ordered from Yes Asia in Hong Kong. Before I get started though, um, I was listening to some CDs in my collection and this one kind of uh, I found interesting after I took the CD out of the uh, case. I don't know why I haven't noticed this before. But anyway, the CD is from Spin Doctors. It is their album, Turn It Upside Down. Now, even though the label looks like it's printed directly on the cassette shell, it's not. It's actually a black sticker affixed to the black cassette. Kind of sneaky. The other release that we had is an older release, obviously. Dumbo. Catalog reference number zero to four and the label is actually printed directly on the cassette shell no sticker 